as soon as I got him on the track, I knew there was something there. He was a big, strong colt, and and he had uh, a lot of energy in him. And uh, uh, I think I trained him that day around 50, 158 or 157, and he was pretty impressive. So that was my first experience with him one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Training is one thing, but how would he perform when it counted? Yeah, there's always questions. I mean, you, you, I mean, you never know how they're going to react when another horse may look him in the eye and, and how he'll be able to fight and show fight. I, I find that the biggest uh, challenge for most horses. But some beat somewhere was up to the challenge. He easily paced to a Canadian record in the elimination race leading up to the Battle of Waterloo. But by winning in such a grand manner, some beat somewhere had caught the eye of horse owners, owners with lots of money. And the easiest way to own a winner is to buy a winner. Some beach somewhere in a Grand River Raceway track record for a two-year-old pacing colt of 154 and two. And note that that is also a, a new Canadian season's record. Mile 154 and two for some beach somewhere. And that day, I guess after that race, a couple of top trainers in Ontario walked up to me and Brent. They were trying to buy the horse right then after his first first lifetime start. So we knew he was very, very special. You know, if we, if we won that race, we were going to have 150,000, and if we won our next race, we were going to have 500,000. So it didn't seem like all, all that much money when I had seen the competition. Uh, and clearly, I thought, he was, I thought he was in a league of his own, and he was. And we also had Paul McDonnell driving for us. Paul yeah. McDonnell has driven lots of great, great horses, great experience in the business, good friend of yours. Yeah. And he was very high on the horse. And, uh, you know, that was different from hearing it from you, who yeah. were one of our buddies. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. weren't sure whether you were talking it up or no, the that's horse right. really Well, and, and not the experience with that kind of horse either. Yeah. So, you know, Paul's confirmation of this being a strong horse went a long ways to making us realize that this horse had some tremendous upside potential. Um, when he, when he put in some steps on that back stretch and uh, came out of that back stretch uh, challenging the lead, um, second race of his career, two year old, um, that's what sealed it for me was uh, seeing him gather himself up and uh, you know he was somewhere he'd never been before and uh, I, th I think Paul McDonnell you know indicated to me that evening that he was uh, one smart colt. 155 flat. Some beach somewhere wins the Battle of Waterloo. And I think after that, Paul Paul came up and said basically this horse is not an Ontario sire. Uh, he should be. He's a Grand Circuit Grand Circuit horse after two starts. So coming from Paul McDonnell, giving a giving a statement like that at a colt was basically telling us that we had a pretty nice horse in our hand. Yeah. yeah. We were just trying to apply logical business principles to it. We knew yeah. how much money he was eligible to race for the, ne the rest of the year. We knew that perhaps at that early stage there might be a breeding career. So when we looked at the multiplication of the potential numbers, we said that isn't a reasonable amount. There's still too much upside here yet. So it was done with uh, some sense of what a reasonable business investor might do, we thought. If, if I'd owned the horse myself and the $750,000 offer came along or two of us owned them, we probably would have, you know, it would have been hard, a lot harder to turn down. But with a group like this, um, where I, I, nobody was really waiting on the money or counting on that money, um, and, and the horse clearly had showed by this time he was special. By this time, it was no secret that some beach somewhere was indeed special. At his home race track in Truro, the fan base was growing. Somebody somewhere had a, a positive influence on, on uh, our attendance here when he was racing um, through the summer and, and, and probably continued on through the end of the year. Uh, just to give you an example, when Sunbeat Beach Somewhere was racing here on the via the simulcast on the Saturday evenings, uh, the last four times he raced, we basically were averaging about $8,000 on the Mohawk Woodbine card. Uh, we averaged about 16000 on those four cards that uh, he was racing on. So that's a 100% increase in the wager. Uh, Attendance-wise, on those Saturday nights, we were normally getting 15 to 20 people on a Saturday night, and upwards to 75 to 100 people were coming here to watch uh, Some Beach Somewhere race. Some Beach Somewhere was quickly becoming a folk hero, and not only to maritime fans, but to anyone in the Canadian harness racing community with a dream of accomplishing the unthinkable. Some Beach Somewhere had become so popular that Truro Raceway even began hosting beach parties. 
just kept growing and uh, people more interest uh, was shown in Sun Beach somewhere. People that haven't been to a simulcast before or haven't been to the races in years, uh, you know, through the media were hearing about Sun Beach somewhere and, and they were coming uh, uh, just to see what it was all about to join in the fun and, uh, and like I say, normally we'd have 15 to 20 people here on a Saturday night and, and it kept growing and uh, upwards to 100 people coming to watch Sun Beach somewhere race. And I guess I liken that to the, to the Super Bowl uh, type thing. You could sit at home and, and you could watch Sun Beach somewhere on a Saturday night at home, but it, it's more of a party atmosphere and you get out and watch, it, watch the horse race with your friends and cheer them on. And, and, it, and it just grew from uh, uh, the more successful they got, the, the more people wanted to watch him race. In the elimination race for the Metro Pace, McDonnell appears to have everything under control and it looks like Sun Beach somewhere will cruise to his third win in as many starts and more importantly, qualify for the million dollar final. But a challenge through turns three and four by Daly provides a wake up call. Gapping out at the rail is Perseus from in fifth. A long way to come for future cruiser. He's sixth on the outside, getting rough gated. Jameson just lost him. In the backfield, the trailer is Handsome Prince. Three quarter station reached in 124 and two, a 28 second third quarter test for some beach somewhere who springs off the turn is still up front by a length. Dolly chasing on the outside in second. He starts to level off though. Shadow play is back in third. Deep stretch. McDonnell has not moved a muscle on some beach somewhere. Some beach somewhere leads by four lengths here in deep stretch and they are not going to touch some beach somewhere who barely broke a sweat to win tonight's third metro pace elimination and he is home in 152 and 1 27 and 4 on the end of it so it would seem pretty simple mcdonnell has just qualified some beach somewhere for the metro pace but some beach somewhere wasn't the only colt paul had driven that evening earlier he had qualified deuce sealster winning by an impressive six lengths in 152 and 2 Back to the winner's circle tonight's third Metro pace elimination. A flawless performance from a pacer who has yet to taste defeat. It's number three, some beach somewhere, son of Mach 3 from the beach tell mayor, where's the beach? Was bred by Stephanie Smithrothog of St. Louisville, Ohio, is owned by the Schooner Stables of Truro, Nova Scotia. The winning trainer, Jean-Louis Arsenault, and the winning driver, Paul McDonnell, perfect three for three. Sweeping this year's Battle of Waterloo at Grand River Raceway here tonight. A stunning effort in his Metro Pace elimination as he scores in 152 and a fifth. Both horses were just unbelievably good the night of the eliminations of the Metro Pace. And um, I, I was really stuck. I didn't know what to do. I'd driven a lot of horses for Darren McCall, the trainer of Deuce, uh, Deuce Sealster. And of course, I've been lifelong friends with Brent McGrath as well. Uh, but I still wanted to make sure I wasn't going to make the wrong decision. So uh, when my decision finally came to me, it, was, it came down to sheer power. He just floated across the ground. You couldn't hear him touch the ground. And I think, I think he's an athlete, and uh, that is probably his main asset. Also, he has another asset, which is called manners, which, you know, and he's, uh, he's perfect on the track. And he's got this unbelievable maturity to him that uh, when he's on the racetrack that most aged horses, it takes aged horses to, to get to that point. Some beach somewhere had won every race he had entered, but the next race would be unique. It would be for a million dollars, and a million dollars would attract the best. The group, however, was confident 